Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. and today I'm reviewing Acropolis from Guillemic Games. Acropolis is a 2-4 player tile placement game in which you are trying to grab these tiles over here and place them into your city on multiple levels. You'll start on the ground level and then slowly build up, trying to score as many points as possible based on five different scoring conditions. You see, every single tile has a few things. There's going to be these white spaces over here, which will give you currency in the game. Whenever you build over a white space, so for example, if I take this and lay it over that tile, such that I cover three white spaces, I'll gather three white stone, put it into my own area over here, and be able to use those to pay for other tiles so having those white spaces is good but then additionally you'll have these tiles over here that contain the, the districts and the plazas districts are going to be these colored districts over here and plazas have stars in them a variable number of stars depending on the color in those plazas districts are going to score for the quantity you have based on different scoring conditions and plazas will be a multiplier to your districts so for example going through these one at a time Blue districts in your in your area are going to score for your single largest blue area. Each blue is worth one, and each one will contribute tor towards your largest area. So, for example, in this situation right, right here, this would be a two-point blue area because this one would be ignored because it's not part of my largest, versus like this would be a three-point blue area. You're going to multiply that blue area by the number of stars you have, number of blue stars you have, and that will be your score for blue. So, for example, three times one right now is, well, three. But additionally, if taken into account the level of the tile. For each level that the tile is, you multiply that by the level. So for example, if we grab some more tiles over here and find another blue, if we go ahead and place this down over, let's just find a place to put this. If we place this like so, then we have this over here. Then we go ahead and place this down. We now have this tile on level two. And so this one would be two, three, four, five times two stars is going to be 10 points. So you, since you can see quickly how larger areas, higher tiles, and more stars will very quickly multiply your scoring areas. Now, I won't visually display for all of them, but let's go through the other types over here. You're going to have the yellows. Yellows are, are marker places, and they'll score for separate marker places. So whenever you have a bunch of yellows, yellows want to be separated from one another. So that yellow is going to be scoring points over there. And this yellow over here, neither would be scoring points because they're together, too much competition, versus like so, they would each be scoring points, again, multiplied by the yellow stars. Reds want to be on the edge of your district, so these two reds will score points just fine, versus this red over here will not. Reds are going to be on the edge of your district, they want to be touching the edge, those will score points that way. Then we're going to have purples, which want to be completely surrounded. This purple is currently worth no points, but now it's completely surrounded, and now that will count towards you. And then greens simply score just by existing. Any green area will simply score by existing, and while that does seem easier, there are fewer greens than other tiles, although the stars on greens are three stars, which is a very large multiplier. You have five different terrain types. You're trying to be mindful of where you place them into your grid, spreading out your area, placing them higher up on your grid so you can get those multipl multiplier effects, trying to figure out where you have the right stars so you can multiply the right stars by the right tiles to get as many points as possible, and that's just the core game. We haven't talked how you get the tiles. We'll come back to that. There are variants as well that will allow you to double scoring. There's going to be a list of variants over here that you can play with any number of them. The game recommends you start off with them one at a time. For the most part, I've been playing with all of them, and I really enjoy the game that way. We'll come back to that to my review. But over here, these variants are going to give you different ways to double any individual tile, to make a tile worth twice as much. In the case of blues, if your largest group has a value of 10 or more, you will double those tiles. For yellows, any tiles that any yellow tiles that are next to a plaza, not next to another vendor over there, but next to a plaza, will be double the points. And again, that's going to be on the level as well. So if it's a second level tile next to a plaza, that's going to be four points multiplied by, let's say, six stars. That can be a 24 points over there. That can be a lot very quickly. Reds are going to be double points if they have three or four empty hexes. So for example, this one has two empty hexes, so it has not. it's not doubled. This one has one, two, three, so this one would be doubled purples are going to be doubled if they're on a higher level so those purples that are anyways doubled get a further doubling if they are above the base level and finally greens are going to be doubled if they are next to a lake a lake is a grouping of tiles that results in a complete surrounding any greens next to a lake like so they would be worth double the points those are going to be the variants and again you're using those to multiply by the variants by the levels by the tiles you have by the stars you have and that will be giving you your actual well score over here as far as the actual gameplay sequence this is all what you're trying to do to gather score oh and then still worth extra points in the game as well. 
as far as actually gathering the tiles, the way that works every single round is you'll have your tile row, and depending on the player count, let's say we're playing right now a three-player game, you're going to have five tiles. You're going to have basically two more than the number of players out, and on your turn, you select a tile from the ones furthest away from the pile. You'll select a tile, and this one would be free. This one would cost one stone. So if I really want to gather this tile to be able to further add it to my mark over here, I already have four blue stars. That's going to be four multiplied. If I get that blue over here, and if I pop that blue honestly down over here, it may be even be worth the compromise of covering up that red star over there let's go ahead and do that but i will pay a single stone to the supply not to the tile itself because i'm crossing the first one you're going to pay one stone for every tile you want past the first and i'm going to go ahead pop this down over here to be able to get those extra points that's going to be two on level two times the number four that's going to be a nice chunk of points i'm getting in addition to my tableau the next player is going to go ahead and pick one maybe they pick this one the next player might pay a stone into the supply or two stones to take this one and then i'll take this last one here this will come down and the next pile will come out that's the way this comes out so the first player gets first and last pick and there's always one tile remaining that goes over to the next round and that's basically how you play the game. You're going to be going through that process, selecting tiles every single round until the stacks run out. At lower player counts, you do have the option of using the tiles that are numbered between two, three, and four players. At lower player counts, if you want a larger game, you certainly have the option of saying, I'm going to play with more tiles, meaning the game rules themselves say, feel free to have a longer game by just playing with tiles above your player count to give you more opportunity to score just tremendous amounts of points as you build up your tableau in Acropolis. And that's basically the game. Every single round, you're going to go through a selection, first player taking two tiles, first and last, having one tile remaining, paying stone to get past the first tile, placing those tiles down into your grid in order to get stone whenever you place them on top of the white areas, and then to be mindful of the scoring and the way those are going to feed into your tableau as you build wide and large and take advantage of any variants you are playing with to get as many points as possible in Acropolis. Which brings to review starting off with ease of play. Game rules are pretty easy to understand. The, the, tile, the, the tile gathering rules, very simple. The, the scoring rules, very simple. The variant rules, very simple. Almost everything in this game is just very simple to pick up and understand. You're grabbing tiles and then you're scoring. That's all you're doing. The intricacies of the game come in the way you have five different scoring variables, you have five different scoring variants, you have multiplication, you have plazas, you have placing things on top, you have the currency in order to get more tiles. Very simple game overall to understand, especially if you've played games like this before. Playtime is very short, depending on two, and whether you you're playing two to four players, you're looking at anywhere from 20 minutes on the low end to maybe 45 minutes on the high end to play a full game of Acropolis. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, overall, I just like the simplicity to depth ratio and these scoring opportunities. I, in general, have been a big fan of these kinds of scoring games where you have different scoring conditions you're trying to take into account, and you're trying to find that line that connects the most like advantageous scoring in the game, where, you know, I'm going to go ahead and playing with the variants, I'm going to build up these temples to higher levels and score as many points as possible for a whole bunch of surrounded temples. If I can go ahead and place this over here and then place this up here you know that temple in the scoring variant that's going to be three that's going to be level three which is doubled so it's six times my two stars which is 12 points for that one temple alone is that correct three times double two times two yeah and if you get more purple stars that's going to score large chunks of points as you go through it other players in the meantime are trying to build wide, trying to gather as many of those blue tiles as possible, because yes, it's true that when you build up, you get scoring multipliers, but inherently you're covering other tiles, so unless you're covering the white areas, which will give you stone, then you are in some way compromising on other ways that you score, and so there's a constant balance of what you go for, how to go for. The player aids nicely list at various player counts the number of tiles of both the tiles and the plazas in the game, so at any point you can get a quick feel for what is the most advantageous to gather based on what's been taken, based on what's left. You can go through all of that, but the entire game comes down to to building up the best scoring multiplier you can. Those variants over here, like I said, I personally recommend playing with all of them. You, I mean, not necessarily the first time, the first time you play, maybe you play with the base game, but even once you start going to a second game, I find playing with a single variant or two variants can make that color more appealing. So for me, I find it's kind of binary. Either play with all of them or none of them, I think is the best way to play the game. I am a little surprised the game, the rule books recommends playing with one at a time. It just means that, you know, yellow tiles will be most in demand because they have more ways of scoring just inherently so i don't love that aspect but the variants themselves i really enjoy I like that process of trying to balance your stone because having the currency in the game to be able to pay for that right tile to be able to go ahead and get the tile you need in the game can be hugely advantageous and a big part of it. That uh, the choice of going wide versus high, the simplicity of the game, the, the playtime of the game, all of these things combine to just give me an incredibly solid, rewarding game that plays in a short time and gives me a lot of things to consider in that short playtime. As far as what I don't like in the game, 
only really thing I could think of is the lack of variability to the experience. This game, I mean, past the variance, the variance do give you something to think about as you die from game to game, but past the variance, there's not much to keep this game different. You're trying to gather tiles, you're trying to place them into your grid, there's nothing else that really changes up the game. There's no, no scoring modifiers for each game. Again, you could play with different number of variants. I don't like the way that gives you a theoretically variable game. I consider it more binary, but past that, there's not a lot to really keep the the engine alive game to game. I enjoy the engine, I'm multiple games deep in this and really enjoying it every single time, but it compared to some other games in the genre, I kind of want, whether an expansion or something, I want more stuff that gives me a reason to change the way I think every time I approach the game, as opposed to finding, finding myself falling into that static, this is the game and this is the way I'll play it. As far as I can see others not liking, it's multiplayer solitaire. You have to be okay with that. Yes, you are vying for these tiles over here, but past that, it's multiplayer solitaire. And then, secondly, I'll say that it is worth noting that especially if you're playing it at three or four players, not so much an issue at two, but if you're playing it at three or four, there is that interesting aspect where you can find yourself fighting for a player with a certain tile type, leading player B or C to have an easier going. What I mean by that is if you and I are both going for those parks, if you and I are both going for those green tiles, and then the other players aren't, then you and I are fighting for each other for points while other players can kind of build up their own things or do their own stuff. So there is that aspect in three or more player games where you can find yourself in a tug of war with a specific other player, hurting both of you and helping the other player or players at the table. It's a minor thing, but it is worth noting that it's a slight issue with three and four player accounts. As far as what I can see, as far as final thoughts, because we're up to that, final thoughts on this one is I love Acropolis. I, I didn't mention what I don't like, but I don't like the cover either. I find this cover does not pull you in, does not tell you what the game is like. The only reason I play this game is because someone told me, hey, I know you love Cascadia, and this is like Cascadia, but with levels. And I was like, well, that sounds intriguing. And so I picked it up, and I played it, and I was like, this is like Cascadia with levels. And I do indeed love Cascadia. I love what Acropolis is doing, despite the fact that it it didn't sell me on the game, someone else sold me on the game, but I love those point scoring engines. I love games in this genre, and I think Acropolis is one that, past the one issue I have with the lack of variability to the experience, I find this is one of the better ones going on. It is incredibly satisfying to build out your city. It's incredibly satisfying to grab stars, to grab tiles, to go high, to go wide, to take into account the 15 different ways you can try to score points in this game, and think through the combination of the tiles available in the market, and grab the right tiles for you. For me, right now, I am putting this as a 5 out of 5 for me for right now. This is exactly my type of game with the one caveat that that variability is the kind of thing that could make this go down a bit over time. Ultimately, we'll see. There's a reason I have a review look back series where I take a look at games I reviewed a year ago. I'm curious as to how Acropolis will hold up. Scoring wise, it's up there with Cascadia for me as the best in the genre. The variability is the one thing that is a potential wondering for the future as far as how this one goes. As far as other game recommendations, first of all, I've mentioned it 17 times this video, but Cascadia. If you like this genre of game, I highly recommend Cascadia from Flatout Games. It will give you a similar point scoring puzzle that is very rewarding in a very different way. And then if you just like that aspect of layering up your city, of building out different levels, of trying to think through how to build wide and then go high as well, uh, Miyabi from Haba Games is a solid game that will give you an interesting degree of, of consideration as far as how you're going to take advantage of those scoring opportunities as you build up in your own private little garden. In any case, and until next time, I hope you've enjoyed this video, hope you found it helpful, and as always, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and I hope you have a good one.